Hello students, welcome to the new year 2023 and let us begin with some new interesting topic in a new year which is a CPT invariance or the CP violation in a weak nuclear interactions. Now as we know that basically there are four fundamental forces present in the nature in the universe and they are gravitational force field, electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force and a strong nuclear force. So out of these four nuclear forces, we know that uh, three of these uh, follow the law of conservations of the energy, linear momentum and angular momentum. But the weak nuclear interaction is one which does not follow all these conservation laws. Now in my previous video, we have seen that these laws of conservations can be represented by the symmetry operations. Okay. Now see here, in a physics we are dealing with the C, P and T symmetries. Okay, so if suppose if you have taken a system under study and if that remains invariant under this C, P and T symmetries, then we can say that the conservation laws of the energy, linear momentum and angular momentum are conserved for that system. Okay which we call it as a CPT invariance. Invariance means it, it remains unchanged, it remains invariant. Okay, it means that laws of conservations are obeyed. So as I said previously, uh, out of this four, the three fundamental forces obeys this CPT invariance or the laws of conservations of the energy momentum and linear momentum and angular momentum but the weak interaction does not follow all the conservation laws therefore we can say that cpt invariance is there for the three fundamental forces but the cpt invariance is not followed or the cp violation whether it can be charge or it can be parity or it can be the time reversal so one or the combination of these can be violated in a weak nuclear interaction so in a weak nuclear interaction this charge parity and time reversal so these can be violated or you can say that this uh, this violations are the main characteristics of the weak nuclear interaction now let us see what is mean by this charge uh, violation parity violation and a cp violation combinedly now first we have taken the example of the parity violation in a weak interaction. Now see here, the beta decay, whether it is a beta plus decay or a beta minus decay, that is an example of the parity violation in a weak interaction. Now suppose uh, we know that whenever there is a unstable heavier nuclei, so that will convert its proton to the neutron or neutron to the proton to attain the stability and such a type of a process in which this proton is converted into the neutron or a neutron is converted into the proton by giving out the electron or positron along with neutrino so such reactions are called as the beta plus decay or the beta minus decay so we have taken an example of the beta minus decay in which we have taken that this cobalt 2760 that decays to the nickel 2860 along with the emission of this electron and the electron neutrino okay now this process can be similarly considered as the neutron convert itself to the proton by giving out the electron and the electron neutrino or it can be also said that this a down cork convert itself into the up cork by giving out the electron and the electron neutrino so these things we have already seen in my previous lecture now what we are new going to see today is that so nuclear spin uh, actually nuclear spin it is not only related to the spin angular momentum of the nucleus but the nuclear spin corresponds to the uh, total orbital angular momentum of the nucleus so this is called as a nuclear spin okay now these are the experimentally calculated values that co60 has a nuclear spin of a 5 whereas this uh, ni60 has a nuclear spin of a 4 
so here we can see that this cobalt has a spin 5 and this nickel has a spin 4 uh, we know that this electron and neutrino are the spin half particles these are the leptons we have already seen in a classification of the elementary particles that these are leptons which are taking part in a big nuclear interactions and these are the spin half particles these are the fermions okay so according to the magnitude i have shown it a, a bigger and a smaller entities now let us see uh, two configurations can be possible for the beta decay okay now if you have taken a beta minus decay process so in this process this electron and electron neutrino are evolved so in the second configuration we have done the same things only the difference is that so suppose um, we are measuring the nuclear spins along the positive z axis okay so in this configuration one this electron neutrino is along the positive z axis whereas this electron is along the negative negative z axis whereas in a configuration two this electron is along the positive z axis and this electron neutrino is along the negative z axis now now we know that whenever uh, there is a uh, electron or if there is a particle which is having uh, angular momentum now see here here the angular momentum is shown by this dash the lines and this spin momentum is shown by some broader arrow okay now the particle which is shown now we are here we have taken the example of the electron so the electron is said to be right handed if the angular momentum and spin momentum are along the same direction now this type of an electron is a called as a right handed electron whereas if the spin momentum and the angular momentum are opposite to each other then that particle or that electron is called as a left handed electron now suppose if we are decaying this cobalt into the nickel okay uh, now let me tell you what this parity operator does okay so when you operate a parity operator on a, any particle suppose this is the parity operator so this parity operator converts the right handed particle into the left handed particle or the left handed particle into the right handed particle it means that the angular momentum direction is changed only there is no change in a spin momentum only the angular momentum direction has been changed so this is the purpose of this parity operator okay now according to the um, cpt invariance okay so if you have taken this uh, uh, cobalt decaying into the nickel okay and if we are trying to measure the angular momentum and spin momentum of the electron and the neutrino okay so the configuration one and configuration two must be observed equally for example if the parity is conserved see okay if the parity is conserved then it is expected that the right handed electrons and the left handed electrons uh, there should be a proportion of the 50 50 percent okay so if we are decaying this cobalt for 100 times okay if you are measuring the 100 particles 100 electrons and 100 neutrinos coming out of this uh, uh, beta decay process then 50 near about 50 must be left handed and 50 must be right handed means you should get the both the configuration equally 50 50 percent then you can say that this parity is conserved okay but uh, this is not happened so it you can say that um, for the most of the times the electrons along the negative z axis were observed means for near about say 90 times the electrons along this negative z axis it means that the uh, left handed electrons were observed for most of the times in this negative beta decay process 
it means that the parity is violated in a weak nuclear interaction and you can say that this negative beta decay is an example of the parity violation in a weak nuclear interaction now see here along with the parity charge is also violated sometimes in a weak nuclear interactions now this pion decay is an example of there are many examples we have taken one which is a pion decay so the pion decay is an example of the charge violation now what this charge operator does this charge operator converts the particle into the anti particle let me write it here so so this is what charge operator do it it has no effect on a spin momentum or the angular momentum of the particle but it will just convert a charge from positive to negative or negative to the positive it means that the charge operator converts particle into the anti particle and vice versa now see we have taken the example of the pion decay so we have taken this pi plus decay and so this pion is decaying into the muon plus plus muon neutrino and this muon uh, as these nuclear reactions are uh, occurring at a very high kinetic energies uh, or the very high energies are uh, say mega electron holes or giga electron holes so this muon will again decay into the positron this is a positron neutrino along this muon anti neutrino and this muon neutrino okay now so whatever positron is found over here that is always a right handed electron it means that this electron angular momentum and the spin both are along the same direction okay now if i operate a charge operator on this pi plus okay so this if i operate this by the charge operator so we can say that this pi plus is converted into the pi minus we know that this charge operator has property to convert the particle into its anti particle so pi plus is converted to the pi minus now if this pi minus decays okay so we can say that exactly opposite particles should be found but this charge particle is not doing anything with this angular momentum and the spin momentum now so this pi minus decays into this mu minus here it is mu plus then anti muon neutrino then this muon mu minus will again de decay to the electron electron neutrino muon and anti muon neutrino okay now as expected from the previous experiment as this positron is right handed and this charge operator has nothing to do with the angular momentum or the spin momentum so whatever positron we are, or whatever electron we are expecting here that should be also right handed okay but this is not observed but experimentally it was found that so this uh, whatever electron we are getting over here that is always left handed it means that so this charge operator or the charge is violated in a weak nuclear interaction uh, now suppose if we take the combined symmetry uh, like if you have taken this electron which is a uh, right handed uh, so let us take this positron which is a right handed let us take the same example this can be also shown but as we have taken this example let us say if the product is a, a right handed positron and if you are operating it right handed means see here right handed means angular momentum and spin momentum both are in a same direction so this angular momentum and this spin momentum both are in a same direction if you are operating it with a charge operator so it will convert this into the uh, e minus right handed okay so this charge operator changes particle into the anti particle so the positron gets converted to the electron okay 
So right-handed will remain right-handed as the charge operator has no effect on a spin and orbital angular momentum. Okay. Now again, if we operate it by the parity operator, you are going to get the left-handed positron because the parity operator has changed the right-handed particle to the left-handed particle. So it is an electron. It will remain electron only. Okay, no positron. Okay, so if we combine thing of this C plus P vibration, okay, so C and P symmetry is combinedly conserved, but the charge is violated. Okay, but when you combinedly think of the charge and parity operators, then the C and P symmetry is conserved. Okay, so the, we can say that this pion decay is an example of the charge violation in a weak nuclear interaction. Okay, now there are some weak nuclear interaction, they can uh, violate both C and P and CP combinedly also. Okay, so the symmetry combined CP symmetry is also violated. So there are some weak nuclear interactions in which charge parity and charge parity combinedly are also violated. So let us see one example of this CP violation. So the kaon decay is an example of the CP violation in a weak nuclear interaction. Now uh, we have uh, by using some quantum mechanical equations we have calculated that this spin half particles have the uh, positive parity or even parity and a spin zero particles will have the negative parity. Now let us have we, uh, we have a k on particle k0 and that decays so to pi 0 and pi 0 or pi plus and pi minor pi plus okay so this so this uh, k on is a particle which is created at a very high energies and when it is created at a high very high energies it tries to decay by uh, different pi ons like it can decay into pi 0 pi 0 or it can decay to pi plus pi plus for the most of the times okay but at a very few times it decays by this pi plus pi zero and pi minus now see here uh, if you are dealing with this equation one you can say that uh, the parity for the first equation is minus one into minus one which is plus one so the parity will be positive and for the second equation so the parity will be minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 so it will be minus 1 so for the same reaction you can see that the parity is violated okay if there is a k0 and which is decaying by different uh, particles okay so the parity should be conserved okay so the parity of the resultant particle must be same as they are coming from the same particle so the particle uh, so the parity for the products must be conserved but it is not conserving over here along with this parity even if you are taking a charge and charge and parity conservation if you are taking just like this so that charge and parity violation so this charge along with this parity is also not conserved for this uh, k -on decay. So you can say that this k -on decay is an example of the CP violation in a weak nuclear interaction. So uh, moral of the story is that uh, uh, charge, parity and time are not conserved or rather you can say that uh, these uh, this charge, parity and uh, time a violation is a feature of a weak nuclear interaction and we have seen the three examples of this violation first we have seen the parity violation in a beta decay then we have seen the charge violation in a pion decay and the charge and parity violation in a k -on decay so keep studying stay focused that's all for today thank you for watching